Okay, so here's one more example of solving a Bernoulli equation from differential equations. So here we're going to solve the equation y prime equals the quantity a multiplied by cosine of t plus b multiplied by y minus y to the third. And this is actually used, this equation is used in the study of the stability of fluid flow. So it's not just some random equation, it actually does get used. And recall what we're going to do here is we're going to make sure that our equation is in the form y prime equals a of t multiplied by y plus f of t multiplied by y to the n. And that's what we have in this case. What we're going to do is we'll use the change of variables, z equals y raised to the 1 minus n, to get this following equation. And then to solve that, we're going to use integrating factors. So again, I have other videos that go more in depth on this process and why it works. So in this one, I'm just going to, to, uh, to just dive right in, basically. So OK, so we've got y prime equals a multiplied by cosine of t plus b multiplied by y and then minus y to the third power. So using our little formulas here, so in this case notice our, our power of n. Our power of n is going to be 3. So when I use that to fill in this bottom formula, I'm going to get the following. And again, just notice that a of t in this case, so a of t is what's being multiplied by y. That's going to be my a cosine of t plus b. And then we have plus f of t. Notice in that case, my plus f of t would actually be a negative 1, because that's what's sitting in front of y to the third power. So let's fill everything in. If we, if we do that, we would use the change of variables. So now we would have that z is going to be equal to y raised to the power of 1 minus 3, or y to the negative second. That's going to be our, our change of variables. So after we do that, we're going to get z prime equals, we said 1 minus n, which is 3. We multiply that by our a of t, which again in this case is a times cosine of t plus b. It says we then multiply that by z. We said that the function in front of our power y to the third, that's just going to be negative 1. And then that gets multiplied by 1 minus n, which in this case is 1 minus 3. So again, all I'm doing is I'm filling in now this, uh, this equation that's in the green box. OK, so if we simplify, not too much to simplify here. We'll get that z prime equals negative 2 multiplied by a cosine of t plus b multiplied by z. Well, we would have negative 1 multiplied by negative 2, which is going to give us positive 2. So now to put this in the correct form for our integrating factors, we put all the, the, the z's and the z primes on the same side. So I've got z prime. I'm going to add this, I'm going to add 2 multiplied by a cosine of t plus b of t of z to both sides. So I'm just going to move this first term over. So we'll have plus 2 times a multiplied by cosine of t plus b multiplied by z. That's going to equal positive 2. And now it's relatively mechanical, you know, if you've seen the other couple of examples. So what we do is we now look at the stuff hanging out in front of z, and we integrate that. We take actually e to the integral of that, I should say. I should be very careful there to get our integrating factor. So e raised to the, well, we've got 2 times a cosine of t plus b. We're integrating that with respect to t. Well, if we integrate that, the integral of 2 times a times cosine of t, we can even just keep the 2 out front. The antiderivative of a cosine of t, that would be a multiplied by sine of t. And then the antiderivative of plus b would be plus b multiplied by t. And of course, there's you don't have to worry about the, the plus c on these. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to take um, both sides of our, our equation here. So this form, 
Again, we take both sides of this equation and we multiply both sides of that equation by our integrating factor. So, so if we do that, well, we would have e 2 times a sine of t plus b of t. That's all getting multiplied by z prime plus 2 times a cosine of t plus b multiplied by z. And then we would have to do the same thing on the right side. So we would have 2 times the integral of, or excuse me, 2 times, we don't need the integral there. Um, it's just going to be equal to 2 times e to the 2 times a sine of t plus b of t. I was jumping to my, my next step here. Okay, so no integral yet. Okay, so all I did was I just multiplied both sides of our equ equation um, by that integrating factor. And now the idea is, so here's the integral. Now what we're going to do is we're going to integrate both sides of this. We're going to integrate both sides of this equation. Again, with respect to t, so I'm being a little sloppy here in my notation. The thing to notice is on the left side, so we've still got our integral, everything that we're integrating, we can actually write that as the integrating factor, which is e multiplied by 2 times a sine of t plus b of t multiplied by z prime. If we take the derivative of this expression, we get everything that we had previously. Okay, so again, that's kind of the magic. So, so check that and make sure that you believe that's correct. You know, take the derivative of this. Again, we're doing this with respect to t, and make sure that you get all of that stuff back. You'd have to do a little simplification to to, to maybe see that. Okay, so the right side, I'm just leaving alone. So again, I'm going to write, hey, that we're integrating here with respect to t. Well, the whole point is, if you integrate a derivative, you just get what's inside there. So we're going to get our integrating factor, e raised to the power of 2 times a sine of t plus b of t multiplied by z. So again, we just get what's inside of here. Now on the right side, we've got to integrate this expression, uh, the integral of 2 times e raised to the power of 2 multiplied by a sine of t plus b of t. The problem is that doesn't have a nice, simple antiderivative. And, hey, this happens a lot in differential equations. You'll get an expression that, well, you just can't really find, there just doesn't exist a nice elementary antiderivative. So in that case, we just have to leave it alone. And that's no problem. The good thing now is we have you know, other techniques, numerical techniques to deal with these types of expressions. So even though it kind of feels like, you know, well, you didn't really do it, that's okay, there's, there's ways to get around it. So we're integrating that with respect to t. We integrated, you know, the, the left side. There really should be an arbitrary constant in here somewhere. I'm just going to write my plus c over to the right. And now we're basically almost there. So the last thing to do you know, the last thing you're going to want to do here is solve for z and then go back and use your original substitution. Again, we said that z was equal to y to the negative second power. So the first thing I'm going to do well to solve for z is I'm going to divide both sides by e raised to the 2 a sine of t plus b of t. So that's just a little bit of algebra. And notice dividing both sides by e uh, raised to the power of 2, a sine of t plus b of t. That's the same thing as multiplying by the following. So let's see that here in just a second. Okay, so on the left side, we're just left with z. You know, I could bring all of this e raised to the power of 2, a sine of t plus b of t to the numerator. All that would do is just change the sign on the exponent, so I would have e raised to the negative uh, 2, a sine of t plus b of t. That's all being multiplied now by this expression. So we've got the integral of 2 times e to the second power multiplied by a sine of t plus b of t dt plus c. 
Okay, we're almost there. I mean, you could simplify this a little bit more. Um, z was equal to y to the negative second power. So z is equal to y to the negative second power. I mean, if you wanted to, you could distribute this out. So we would have e raised to the negative second, a sine of t plus b of t multiplied by this integral. If you wanted to, you know, you could pull the 2 all the way out front. We have e raised to the power of 2, a sine of t plus b of t dt. Again, we're distributing, so we would have plus c multiplied by this expression out front. So e raised to the power of negative 2, a sine of t plus b of t. And, you know, last but not least, okay, so this is the same thing as 1 over y to the second. I'm not, I, I'm going to be a little lazy here. You could put all of this stuff, uh, you know, drop all of this stuff right down. Well, if we simplify that, we could just take the reciprocal of both sides. So we would have y to the second power, and then we would have 1 over all of this stuff, 2 times e to the negative second, a sine of t plus b of t multiplied by the integral of e raised to the power of 2, a sine of t plus b of t, oh man, this is so much fun, uh, plus c times uh, e raised to the negative 2, a sine of t plus b of t, let me hopefully get it all in there, sorry, it looks a little sloppy there, that's b, of, b multiplied by t. And last but not least, just take the square root. So your solution would be y equals positive and negative, the square root of all that stuff. So one last time, you would have 1 divided by this original expression that we had in the denominator. So 2 e to the negative second, a sine of t plus b times t multiplied by the integral of e raised to the power of 2, a sine of t plus b of t, b times t, excuse me, dt, plus c times e to the negative second, a sine of t plus b multiplied by t. Oh my goodness, that was a good time. So, Again, basic idea, we just used our, our little, you know, our substitution formula to, to get the correct equation. Then it's just a matter of getting the integrating, the integrating factor, you know, multiplying both sides by that, integrating both sides of that, and then just simplifying it using a bit of algebra.